and welcome to Add More Zest. It's Rebecca, also known as Four Kids at 147, and I've finished the absolutely adorable mystery painting from Margaret, and it is time to de kit. So, this was gifted to me. It is a square mystery painting. I kitted this up before our June waffle. Um, it was very interesting because I did it as um, a grid and let the app decide where and partly because of the where the app decided and partly because there is all this floral stuff around the rabbit it took quite a while for me to realize it was a rabbit which was actually really quite nice because it was a mystery and I didn't know what it was in the first place you know the sections that it sort of did didn't lead you to one thing or another beforehand. I think it did down here and it did a couple up here, but even when it sort of started to do around the nose and stuff, it wasn't until I really got this full part of the nose. And I think I think the eye was done by then that I really realized what it was. Um, so that was nice. The squares, the, the diamonds themselves, are a little they're the diamonds that seem a little bit small for the squares but sitting quite nice next to each other it's as though the bottom of them is a little bit bigger than the rest but the overall effect is absolutely amazing so I have popped most of the details in my logbook and um, so I have put that this was a mystery painting that turned out beautifully once it was completed it took quite a few sections to know what it was going to be and the size worked well for the image. So this is a 30 by 40 and I think this picture looks perfect as that. I have given the canvas, which was double sided tape, and the drills both four stars each. They were nice to work with. It was a nice canvas to work with. Um, they're four stars because I have worked with better. But the quality time and the sort of enjoyability of it was was a five stars. It was it was really quite nice to work on, which I enjoy as much as anything else. So it is time to de-kit. It is another square. Um, and I do have loads of extras. So while that 800 bag has been emptied, this one still has loads in, as does this. And I have quite a few diamonds left in all the other pots as well. So I'm going to start with my heaven and earth design diamonds because it is a square. Are there any of these that I need for my heaven and earth designs? That is the question. So it takes a little bit to flip through. So 318 I need. So let's pop those in. So I have quite a few bags of 318 in here, but there is one diamond painting that uses these darker colours. And, oh, let me get my little bin down again. Still got the remnants of the last one I de-kitted. Uh, 413 is not in the 414, 415, 646, nope, 762. No, 779, 814, nearly, 823, no, 898, that's 890, that's me, I can't write properly, 902, we do have that one, I've got a few different bags going of 902, so let's find one of those and tip in the extras, that one's used a lot in my very big heaven and earth designs. Take the label off so I don't get confused. 938, but no, 939. I know that one is used in my big one. So I've got quite a few extras for my heaven and earth designs for this. Be quite interesting when I start the canvas of the heaven and earth designs and how many of those I use. 3072, no, 3371, no, 
three seven six eight. Okay, no, three seven nine nine, no, three eight six five. No, and B5200, no. Okay, so Heaven and Earth Design Diamonds have been pulled out. So we'll bob that back. And then it's on to my normal boxes. So the first box is between my 100s and 600s. And 154 is already full. I had a feeling that was one that was already too full. So I'm going to put that aside. And I'll pop that in my to give away slash other projects. 413, which I'll show you at the end. 413 is also, I'd say, too full. 518. I am limiting how many diamond diamonds I will now hold to in my extras that aren't being used for a heaven and earth design to one bag of each type. So one bag of square, one bag of round. I don't need any more than that for if a painting runs out. Okay, 644. And that is because my extra diamonds were exploding. I had far too many everywhere. So by limiting the amount that I keep means that I still have any that I may need if a diamond, if a painting doesn't have enough, which I have experienced recently. And yet I'm not taking up too many boxes because some of them I have copious amounts left over. Okay, 702. So I can still fit some in there. Bright green. A few different shades of bright green in there, depending on what the manufacturer thinks the colour should be. And then 734. Sometimes I do kind of wish that DMC would go up in number order kind of feel like it would make things a lot easier, but I guess they have their reasons. So we've got 734, then it jumps straight to 738 you see. Okay, 800. Now this is one that I have copious amounts left over. I actually have different shades to the shades that I've already got. But I don't know if they're all going to fit in here. I think I need my big tray. Let's find my big... This is my... In fact, it's still got a stopper in it from when I made stoppers. But this is the easiest way to get all these diamonds out of here. And dealt with in one. Is to just tip them out. And then these will get reused when I need them for future kits. So I'll take off both the 800 labels. If I can get them to come off nicely, it's too hot in the UK today for them to come off nicely. Okay, they're off. They always seem to get stickier when it's hot. So let's see how many will go in here. Oh, I think we might put them all in, actually. It's amazing how many of these little bags hold, considering it looks quite full in one of these. These bags are really good at holding a chunk, which is why I think it is plenty um, to have one full amount of that colour. Okay, let's pop that tray over there. We may or may not need it again. 813. I have had a few of those before, albeit not many. And these are definitely a different shade again. I wonder which seller was right. 
but because when you do run out of what the, the painting that you're working at tells you is 813, by putting both in there, I have the option for both and I can pick the closest one to the manufacturer that has shorted me some diamonds. So I don't mind mixing them together. And that's the main reason. Plus, if I ever do a project where I'm using up my spares, very similar to my Heaven and Earth design project, I make sure that I choose a painting and an image of a painting that it doesn't matter if the shading is slightly different between dye lots. Um, and, and a lot of the, the stuff that I'm using spares for is my Heaven and Earth designs. And because their paintings have so many different colours in them and are very confetti, because the two different shades aren't necessarily next to each other, you can't tell. You really can't tell. Which is why I use them for those projects primarily. Just in case you were wondering, I know there are some people that if it's two vastly different colours, they like to have them in separate bags and they like to keep them separate. And that's perfectly fine too. It is a matter of each to their own. Now, is that actually 966 or 960? Have I got nine? Oh, okay, there is no 960. That answers that one. I was wondering because I seem to have 993 here. So I thought I'd done it the wrong way around, but that's definitely not any number between one and five. So we'll have a 996 in one and then we'll actually go back. Oh, because that's 966. 993 does follow 966. Oh, the numbers going round in my head wrong. Does come before 996. Yes. See, this, this is what I endure when I am putting paintings away and I'm warm and it's hot. I, I can't do simple which number is the biggest. Okay, 3000 box. So this is my last box of diamonds. This one is a little bit easier to move in. I don't know whether it's because I don't have as many spares or whether because there's not as many sections. There's not as many numbers in the 3000s. Get the little rogue diamond that decided it wanted to stay in the bottom of the pots. So 3021, 3328. So I've got quite a few of those. Let's add a few more. Looks like I've got static in these ones as well. You can just sit in there and calm yourselves down. 328 and then 3354. Oh, I do have some of those. Thought we were going to get a lot of colours that I don't have then. It's quite nice to see that occasionally you know you are getting colours that you've never worked with before or on a diamond painting that you've done anyway. We've got a 3689. There's not many 36s in the DMC range. There's only seven of them. Seven numbers that start with 36. Maybe they decided they didn't like them. I don't know why they've got so many that start with 37, to be honest. Sometimes there's so many sevens in it. 726 with 3771, 3779, I think, 3799. There's loads of them. And I've got another diamond that's stuck at the bottom. Let's give the pot a flick. Be careful. 
because I need this storage ready for another project. I don't know what project yet, but it needs to be ready for a project. Okay, 3750. I know I've used this one before. It's, it's not quite as dark as 939, but it is a, it is a very nice deep blue. 3750. You sort of get in after doing diamond painting for a while and because I did cross stitch for a while you do find yourself getting familiar with some numbers. They do tend to stick in your head. So 3755. But as you can see when I'm tipping these in, considering some of these colours were only in the painting very slightly, knowing there wasn't loads of them. Um, I do have a nice decent amount of spares. Okay, 3756. I actually don't need that many. They're a slightly different shade, so I'm going to stick with the ones that were in the pot. Those I'm going to put in my either sharing slash other heaven and earth design projects depending on which comes up first. Somebody needing the colour or the heaven and earth design project. Whichever comes up first gets the diamonds. Okay, 3756. And this was only this was a colour that was only used for shading and I've still got a nice amount left over. Makes a nice change from my home fun custom that I finished shortly before this one where I had to take diamonds out of my spares box. 3768. Get those in. And we're nearly there. Ooh. Sticky, sticky, sticky. 3835. This is when I realised that my writing of numbers wasn't that neat. And I'm trying to actually make out what they are. Because this, for this painting, when I kitted it up, if you saw the kitting up, while it did come with a, a sheet for me to be able to make the stickers from, it, there was also quite a distance between the numbers, between the symbols and the DMC numbers. And the symbols on the sheet were actually quite large, like this, which is quite nice when you're actually working on the painting. It's nice to have such clear symbols. So I just wrote the DMC numbers on on the side so that I would have them for de-kitting because you don't really need them when working on the painting unless it's just a matter of curiosity which quite often it is with me I just get familiar with the DMC numbers and what colours they look like okay 3845 and then last for this box is 3846 had some gorgeous blues in this. Gorgeous. I do need to get the canvas trimmed down as well so that that can go in my folio, which I'll do when the diamonds are sorted. So that is the end of that box. Three thousands are done. Oh, now I need to find my other spares box. Excuse the rustling, but there is unboxings and stuff all in the way. Obviously, I've not planned. So this is what I'm currently using to hold my overflow. It is a box from 3D Filament, would you believe? Okay, 154. So do I already have... I do. I already have a bag here of 154 that's extra. So let's see if they'll fit in for the purposes of not needing to do another label. They do. So these are my 
full on overflow. I just have them labelled up as 100s, 200s, etc. So in the 400s, I also have a bag already of 413. So I'm going to tip those in. Now, of course, if somebody does need some spares, I will quite probably just put them into, you know, a different bag to send to them. But And then 3756. Oh, yes. I have quite a few different bags of these, so I'm going to use this one because it's the one with the most room. Let's tip them into here because while these bags are wonderful for the extras, for storing them on a book ring and they hang off the side of my cart more often than not, um, they're not the best for tipping from one to another. When I have to refill, I tend to put my pot on top of my tray so my tray can catch, catch the ones that fall. But I wouldn't like to try and move them from bag to bag out of that one. Should have remembered I had loads of these because these, this colour was what um, I did an ever moment painting in. And they're well known for giving lots of extras. So that is all of those moved to there. So let's bob that back. Storage box. Let's take off the label that tells me what painting it is. And that's just used because I often have so many kitted up all at once. That storage bag. So these bags, I have a book ring full of loads of them. It came as like a set of a hundred, not that we'd need a hundred, but it came as that many. Um, so they just hang up on my pegboard. Don't need that little top, but what I do need to do is put this little chappy away. So first up, I'm gonna cut off round the edge of the painting to trim it down for my folio. Now, this is a true 30 by 40, so I am probably gonna have to cut a row of each di of diamonds off on each side as well, but I'm gonna test that in a minute. This is the point where if you like to keep your legend, this strip down here, that is the time that you could possibly also cut that off and maybe put it in your logbook. I know some people have suggested that keeping the legend in case a diamond ever falls off, you know what colour it is, which could be helpful. And they put it in there, in with their, say, the likes of their logbook or maybe in with the painting itself. So that they have those details. I've only ever done it for one painting before where I've kept the legend and I've kept some diamonds but that was a an image that I did for my niece so I did it for my niece's bedroom who was three or four at the time and was a, it was still is very inquisitive so I did have visions of her wanting to touch the diamond painting a lot and would potentially knock some diamonds off so for that painting I did keep um, the legend it didn't have too many diamonds on it actually I think it only had about seven colours in the whole painting but I kept the legend and I kept a little bag of a few diamonds each I say a few, probably about 50 or so. It was an ever moment, so I had tons of spares. And I tacked it onto the back of the frame for the painting because it didn't have any glass on it. So if she did knock any off, it could be found. And my mum diamond paints in Australia, so she could have fixed it. Okay. So this is the folio that I use. It is an A3. You can get them in A2 size, 
but I find A3 fits underneath this craft desk. I have a little gap, fits underneath it really nice. So let's see, are we going to have to cut any off? On this one, we're not. So it must have just been a little bit shorter than 30 centimetres across. And it actually fits on here. Perfect. Let me grab my tape. So I like to stick the canvas down with a little bit of double sided tape. Where's my, here's some smaller scissors. And this just helps it not to move around in the folio quite as much. I tend to just go with three strips, bump, bump, bump. Three strips of tape. And it's not the best adhesive, but it definitely keeps it in the folio, keeps it straight, keeps it how I want it lined up. And if I did want to remove it, I could. So once I've got it lined up, I peel back the front or the top and then let that drop down. And that will then hold that in place. Okay. It, it will peel up if I want it to because it, is, it, isn't a it isn't a glue necessarily made for material, which is what the canvas is. Um, but it does stick more so to the paper. But if I did want to move it, it would, you know, with a bit of a bit of an old heave ho, it would let me move it. Look at that. Isn't he gorgeous? Um, so let's uh, bob him. Oh, we can go next to the June Waffle Winter Tree. They were both finished around the same time. And I do put each painting on its own individual piece of card. That just means when the book's finished and it's completed, I mean, this is already book number two, I may decide that those two together clash a little bit and I may decide to move them about and maybe put some, you know, that are more suited next to each other. But at the moment, they're just in there. See, that was the other mystery I did. 30 by 30. It's not quite got the same impact as that one, has it? Not quite the same. But yeah, that one is all done and away. I'm nearly there putting away all the diamonds for the paintings that have been finished. I think I've got one more to go. Um, I've got the big um, custom the, the third custom, I still need to de-kit from that one, but that will be coming up soon. Do stay tuned because I also need to kit up another custom. And yeah, that will also be coming in the next few days. But thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.